Ghana started with good prospects. The country was rich from cocoa and gold. Today, Ghana is a land of the future, and Accra, its capital, a fine modern city. Once they'd achieved political freedom, all Africans expected tangible improvements to their lives. They wanted economic freedom as well. In Ghana, hopes were high. Do you think better now? It's far better than before. Far better. Do you make more money now? Yes, yes. Make more money. Our trade is on successfully, and we feel happy now than before. We are happy in everything. On account of the independence. Ghana had all the trappings of a new nation. A brand new airline was training its own pilots. Communications were better. Hello, London. Hello, London. Ghana Airways, roads, schools, colleges, universities, harbors, everything. Buildings. You see, these uh, estate houses were all built by Nkrumah for the poor. And you see some poor people now having a house to live in. Education. People like me couldn't have been a lawyer. It's impossible. But when Nkrumah came, he opened the doors for everybody. Like most of the new African governments, Ghana adopted a socialist system and believed central planning would bring the fastest improvement for the mass of the population. Nkrumah called his version scientific socialism. Ghana has made challenging and exciting plans for industrial development. They will attract foreign investment and increase and diversify her production which has hitherto depended largely on the cocoa crop. The spectacular progress made industrially and financially in Ghana has captured the imagination. The giant Volta Dam would produce all the electricity the country needed and allow aluminium to be smelted in a new plant as well. But in the rush for development, mistakes were made. Ghanaians soon became victims of bad advice and greed. Huge silos built for the cocoa crop were never used. The aluminium smelter was a financial disaster. When he thought the road schemes were too grandiose, engineer Eddie Francois complained to the president's office. This did not warrant a four-lane highway. A two-lane highway at that time would have been enough. There were other places in Ghana which required that money, and that money wasn't put in the right place. Eventually, a friend of my father called me aside and said, hey, keep your mouth shut. Don't interfere with the politics of this game. At that time, it was felt that um, uh, there was a, a bit of a rub off on the party so that the party uh, could be financially um, strong. The usual thing that was uh, bandied around was that 10% uh, of every project went to the party. Nkrumah was now gathering all political power into his own hands and building a cult around himself. He was the savior, messiah, redeemer. His picture was seen on shirts, dresses, coins and stamps. Streets were renamed after him. His titles included chairman of the central committee, prime minister and general secretary of the party. Ghana became the first of many one-party states in Africa. More people have been fined for breaking the curfew imposed last Saturday in the city of Accra. 89 people appeared before a magistrate's court. They all pleaded guilty. The economic promises weren't delivered, and scientific socialism soon turned into autocracy. <laughs> People were afraid to speak their minds. You were spied on. Anything you said against Nkrumah could be written down and they'd come and arrest you. If they arrested you, they didn't ask you about what you'd said. They just sent you to prison. If you were there and you died, you died.
Ghana is passing through a revolutionary period. We cannot, under any circumstances, allow imperialists and new colonialists to interlock with traitors in our midst to deflect us from the path of duty and progress. In 1966, Nkrumah was deposed by his own army. The same Ghanaians who had first worshipped him now turned on him. World cocoa prices had slumped, the state schemes had cost too much, foreign loans had stopped, and the country was bankrupt. The hopes his people had put in him lay shattered only 10 years after independence.